excited about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost excites me, saints. Hallelujah. For God will reveal himself to you in a way that he has not revealed himself to you in times past. And that excites me. For God gives us something to look forward to. To experience him, hallelujah, in a new way each and every day. That's the type of God that we serve. He never gets old. <laughs> hallelujah. But God is like opening up a gift on Christmas every day. Oh, <laughs> there's such excitement. There's such joy because we serve an everyday God. And saints, this morning, I would like for you to turn with me to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus, chapter 3, and the Lord, he has a word for us this morning that will apply to all of our situations, because he knows what we are going through. He knows what we face, and he knows what we have need of. And so follow along with me beginning at verse number one of the book of Exodus chapter three. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the mist of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Saints, read verse 3. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. In verse 5, let's read together. And he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, we praise and thank the name of our great God for the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Verse 6 goes on to say, Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And, saints, as we read these verses in the book of Exodus chapter 3, and how God, he called Moses to a work that God had for Moses to do. And this morning's message is why is God trying to get your attention? Why is God trying to get your attention? And it's easy as we look at the scriptures to see that God, he got Moses' attention by a miraculous event, something that defied the laws of physics, that defied the laws of nature. And yet, God, he wants you and I to realize that there is a reason. Now, Moses may not 
understood at the time why God was getting his attention. But there's going to come a time in our lives where God, he gets our attention. And the three reasons why he gets our attention is because, one, we're not in the place where God wants us to be. We're not in the place where God wants us to be. And I'm not talking about a physical place, but a spiritual place. See, by our plan and our will and our ingenuity, we put ourselves in a place where we want to be. But it's only by obedience to the word of God that we can arrive to the place where God wants us to be. Hallelujah. And when we are not in that place where God wants us to be, that, that spiritual place where you're unable to feel his presence like you used to. You're unable to experience the joy that you once had. And God will get your attention to let you know that there is something that you're not doing or that you used to do that you need to a man, go back and do what you used to do to get back to that place where you used to be. Hallelujah, he's worthy of the praise. The next reason that God gets our attention is to reveal something to us. And God either reveals himself to us in a way that we have not known in time past, or he will reveal something about ourselves. God's word is a mirror. And basically a mirror is just a piece of glass. And when we see God or when God reveals something to us, he opens up a window that Amen. He reveals himself to us in a way that we have not seen before. God is able to show us something about himself to let you know that I'm more than just a savior. I'm more than just a provider. I'm more than just a comforter. I can be your healer. I can be your friend. I can be your peace, I can be your joy, whatever it is that you need. I can be to you. However, God, he wants us first to get to that place, hallelujah, where he wants us to be, then he's able to reveal himself to us in a way that will supply our needs. And not only is God's word a window, but it's a mirror that shows us a reflection of ourselves. When you look in the mirror, it's not your actual self. It's a reflection or an image of who you are. And the word of God, I said the word is a mirror. It will show you your actual self and it will reveal that which glory to God is not necessarily good about you because it's trying to show you what's hindering you from getting to that place where God wants you to be when we look in the mirror we like to 
only focus on the good. But yet, there are some things that we need to correct in order for us to present ourselves to others in, in a presentable way. And so God, he just is preparing us, hallelujah, that we might present unto himself a glorious church. One day he's coming back for his church and saints, we must continue to look in the mirror. Hallelujah, that we can see the wrinkles. We can see the spots, the blemishes that need to be addressed. That we can be ready and presentable when the Lord comes back for his church. And so God, he has a way by his word of getting our attention. And the third reason, so the first reason was that we're not in the place where God wants us to be. The second reason that, that God is trying to reveal himself to us and reveal ourselves to us. And the third reason is that, amen, we're not, amen, in a direction or going in a direction toward God. Toward God. Hallelujah. See, the Lord, he is concerned about the direction that is the steps that we take the, the walk or the life that we live and a life as, as we sing amen by the psalmist we want the word to order our steps direct my path when the word directs your path. Then you are walking in a way that is toward God. But when you direct your own path and lean on your own understanding, yet you are walking, but it's not in a direction toward God. And God, he sees the danger that lies ahead. He sees danger that we don't see. When we take matters into our own hand. And so, I, God, he's a loving God. He just wants to get your attention to let you know that your ways are, are, is going to lead you into a situation that you don't want to be in. And how many know that this flesh is rebellious? When the flesh has a mind that's made up, it was going to continue in its own way, regardless of who's trying to get your attention, who's trying to warn you. There were times where my parents, they would give me advice and try to warn me because they, they saw, based on their experience, that I was headed down a path that I did not want to go down. But yet, being young and hard-headed, I did not listen and walked in my own path. And sure enough, <laughs> now I never came back and told them that they were right. <laughs> but yet, sometimes you learn the hard way based upon the stubbornness of this flesh. And God, he's the same loving parent. See, our parents don't tell us and warn us because they don't love us. They tell us and, and warn us because they do love us. And the Lord, he loves us just the same, but God does not force us off of our way and force us to serve him. He gets our attention by his word and glory to God, not only, so I gave you three reasons why, but the two reasons how he gets our attention is by his word. He speaks by his word. He, he warns us. He instructs us by his word. As we come together and assemble in the house called by God, God's word is speaking to our hearts. Let God's word speak to you. Let, don't, don't just look at the scriptures. 
But we must get to the point where we hear the voice of God. And the voice of God will always agree with his word, but it won't agree with his flesh. And we must understand that when the word does not agree with the flesh, it can seem bitter. But the bitterness can be turned into sweetness. When we hear this word and surrender to it. When we yield to the way of God and turn from our own way. Well, here, God, as we are very familiar with this passage of Scripture, God, he had to get Moses' attention. Now, God, he may not use a miraculous event like he did with this burning bush, but there are times where God will use situations and circumstances that defy medical logic to show you that I'm a miracle worker. I'm still a healer. I'm still a way maker. And he shows you these things that you might turn to him and serve him. Hallelujah. Turn to him and surrender to him. Hallelujah. The miracle may not necessarily be in your life, but he will show you what he can do to let you know that I'm a God above all gods. And there is no one like me. Well, here, Moses, he was on a man the backside of the desert. This was a place. But until he came to the mountain of God, this was what, the place where God wanted him to be. And we must understand that when we get to that place that God wants us to be. Because when he found us, we weren't in a good place. The Bible said we were dead in our sins. Hallelujah. We were physically alive, but we did not realize that we were spiritually dead. But God, hallelujah, he let us know that by the Holy Ghost, I'm able to quicken you and bring you and resurrect you. I'm able to bring you up out of your grave of sin, hallelujah, and set you in a heavenly place. Ooh, I praise God. Hallelujah. When God resurrect you by the Holy Ghost, you're going to know it's God. Because he puts a joy in you that you never experienced before. Hallelujah. He put a fire in you. And it's not a fire that consumes you, but the fire of the Holy Ghost represents the presence I'm the Lord. And that's the place where you want to be. You want to be where the presence of God is. Today, people are looking for the presence of people. But the presence of people doesn't necessarily guarantee the presence of God. The Lord said, all I need is two or three that have the presence on the inside, touching and agreeing. I'm going to be in the midst. I praise God every time we come together. God shows up. And when God shows up, he's ready to minister. Hallelujah. He's ready to heal. He's ready to meet all of your needs. You cannot be in a better place, but let God minister to you. Let God meet your needs. I don't know what man needs it, but God does. And as we minister according to his word, God, he will show up. And so the moment that Moses got to the place where God wanted him to be, then, then God, he manifest himself and he revealed himself to Moses in a way in which Moses had never seen before. Hallelujah. And so this bush, it appeared unto him in a flame. 
out of the midst of the bush. And Moses, he looked, he looked. And behold, the bush burned with fire. And the bush was not consumed. This was a miracle. And we have to understand that miracles are not governed by man, but miracles, they come from God. Hallelujah. The greatest miracle is not necessarily healing for the body, but healing for the soul. Because no one has seen the presence of God, but they can feel. Oh, Lord God, when he manifests himself. Amen. In a spiritual way. Hallelujah. And so now that God had got Moses' attention because Moses now, he looked, he saw something that God was showing him. God, he revealed himself to Moses. And now Moses, look what he did in verse 3. He said, I will now turn aside. See, this is Moses responding to the revelation of God's word. Until we respond to God's word by turning from our own ways. Hallelujah. And turning toward God. Hallelujah. He turned to, to see this great sight. Hallelujah. Not just what was happening, but look what he said. He said, why? Why the bush is not burned. When God gets you to the point where you're not so much consumed with what's happening in your life, but why it's happening. See, this is the question we must get to. Hallelujah. Why is God getting my attention? Hallelujah. Why? Am I going through and experiencing this situation? See, when you get to the point where you ask God why, now you're ready to hear his voice. Oh, somebody ought to give God praise. I'm showing us how God, hallelujah, works, amen, with those in whom he wants to accomplish his will. And we have to understand, saints, Hallelujah, that we may not always know what's happening, but we have to get to that point where we ask God why. So that we can hear God speak to us. Sometimes we're just not ready to hear God speak. We're not ready for the answer. Oh, Lord. See, we can go through situations, experience situations, but we never get to that point where we ask God why. And don't you know that we're going to continue to repeat that same situation and that same circumstance over and over again until we turn from our ways, hallelujah, and turn toward God. Oh, he's a good God, saints. Amen. I hope and trust that you receive this word because when Moses, he turned and said, why? And when the Lord saw, see, we can't superficially just say I'm changed. The Lord has to see it. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have to turn and meet his conditions and not based upon our conditions. Amen. Here, when the Lord, he saw the conditions of my heart. When I was seeking the Lord for the Holy Ghost, he saw that I met the conditions of his word. He saw that I was sincere. He saw that my heart was broken. Hallelujah. And God, he began to speak. I'm glad when you get to that position where you can hear God speak. Not just hear the voice of man, but hear the voice of God. Speaking by his word. Glory to God. He's trying to get your attention that you might turn from your way because your way has only gotten you this far. But yet it's taking you in a direction that's not toward God. 
And when you walk in a direction that's not toward God, God is not walking with you. Hallelujah. And so here, amen, God, he called Moses. He called him by his name. Glory to God. I'm glad that one day God, he called me personally. Amen. Got my attention to show me that I was not in a place spiritually where he wanted me to be and where I needed to be. But it was me. I had to respond to God by way of repentance. Repentance means to turn from your way and turn toward God. It's a double turning. It's turning from something and turning to something. Lord, I can't have it my way and God's way at the same time. But yet when, look, it says Moses, he turned aside toward the Lord. God called him Moses, Moses, and Moses said, here am I. And then God gave him further instructions. Can't you see it's a step-by-step process that we might draw closer to God. See, there is a means by which God gets our attention. Hallelujah. When we see what God is trying to show us, then there is a response that we might hear his voice. And then God, hallelujah, when we respond and surrender to the Lord, Lord, here am I. Oh, I, I, I submit myself to you. Hallelujah. I surrender. Glory to God. Hallelujah to your will. Then God said, come on a little closer. Oh, but before you draw near, oh, look, you got to take your shoes off. You got to take something off. Hallelujah. That you might draw close to God. See, God reveals ourself to us. He's showing us there's something we got to put off. Whether it's our selfishness, whether it's our, amen, anger, whether it's our impatience. Hallelujah. You put and take it all before God can put something on you. Lord, I don't need these shoes if it's going to hinder me from drawing close to God. God said, you cannot come close to me on your terms. Glory, you can't serve me conditionally. Oh, Lord, when it's convenient for you. But if you desire to draw close, you put your shoes off. Hallelujah. See, the feet, God, he wants, amen, nothing hindering your feet. Because it is your feet that represent your walk. Hallelujah. There must be nothing that directs your path but God's word. And as, hallelujah, amen, we know where we, ever we stand. With the presence of the Holy Ghost, we are standing on holy ground. Glory to God. Yes, God, he's everywhere, but he's not abiding everywhere. And we must know that Everywhere we go, we must establish a standard of holiness. Holiness on our job. Holiness in our home. As you're in the supermarket, wherever you go on vacation, holiness is the standard of God. And it's a standard that has been uh, forsaken and forgotten by, by many, but yet not forgotten by God. Because The Bible said, holiness without no man shall see the Lord. And and so here, Moses, hallelujah, God began to speak to him and and let him know I am. Hallelujah. See, God was showing Moses that, hallelujah, before anything existed. Glory to God, I am the almighty God. Amen. And there's no... God beside me. And here, I'm the God of your father. Amen. Abraham, the God of your father, Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And when Moses, he heard this, he was afraid out of reverence, and he fell, amen, to his face. 
Oh, God, he got his full attention now. Amen. There are times where we have to surrender ourselves and fall before the Lord and say, Lord, enough is enough. I'm tired of doing it my way. Glory to God. I'm tired, oh, Lord, of going and suffering, amen, without joy. See, you don't want to suffer as an evildoer. You want to suffer for righteousness' sake. Because when you're suffering by obedience, the joy of the Lord will be with you. But if we are suffering because of our own disobedience, we are suffering without God. Oh, I thank God for the word because God, hallelujah, he let Moses know I got a people. And this people were in bondage. And I'm going to deliver them. But I'm going to use you, hallelujah. And instead of Moses looking at this as a privilege, because it's a privilege to get to know God. It's a privilege to be a part of his body, a part of his work. See, there are many church buildings, but there's only one church. And I know that God's church is a Holy Ghost church. Amen. And when the Lord saved you and, amen, baptized you into his church, it's a privilege to do the will of God. Amen. But hallelujah, Moses responded and said, who am I? See, uh, we have to understand that in our own weaknesses, Hallelujah, we must not use our weaknesses as excuses why we cannot accomplish the will of God. Hallelujah, we disobey God's word and, and say this flesh is weak. Well, we know it's weak. Hallelujah, it's just an excuse, but it's not an excuse. Oh God, that is accepted by God. But when saints of God Holland, you acknowledge, Lord, I'm weak, but you are strong. And even in our weaknesses and inadequacies, God is able to be that which you're not. Amen. And the Lord, he let Moses know that it's not about you. It's all about me. As long as my presence is with you, that's all that you need need. See, the presence of the Holy Ghost is all that you need. It's not the riches. It's not the popularity. It's not the success of this world. But being successful in Jesus. He's mighty sweet. And after Moses asked him, who am I? Then he asked God, who are you? And God began to say just two letters, one letter, and a word, I am. Oh, hallelujah. It's amazing that God doesn't have to prove himself to anyone, but just tell him. That I am sent you. That I am. That is all that you need. That and here God that was showing us that by the statement that I am that that I can be that anything you need me to be. That but when Jesus Christ that the Son of God. That he walked this earth. That he said before that Abraham was. That I am. That isn't he great, saints? That how can God, that the invisible God, that say he's I am? That and Jesus, that Christ the Son, say I am. That but because they're all one. 
that Jesus is God that in the flesh that Jesus said I am that the bread of life that that not only can feed you that but can strengthen you that can give you that substance that when you're hungry that not just naturally that but spiritually that Jesus said that I am that the light that of the world that you were lost in darkness that but thank God that the light that the Holy Ghost that is the light that that came in your soul that and when the light that of the Holy Ghost that came in your soul that it moved out darkness that and when Jesus said that I am the light that and he give you the light that and then he said I'm going to reveal to you that that I am that the way that the truth that and the life that once you get the light that you're going to walk in the way that Jesus is the way that out of that darkness that and he's the way that into the light that of God that and he showed us that that when you're walking in the way that I'm gonna be that your door that where you can walk through that enter in that to my presence that anytime that you so desire that not just this one time a year that but God's door that is always open that is always available that hallelujah but you that must make yourself that available to God that and the Lord said that I am the door that but I'm also that the good shepherd that I will lead you that I will guide you that when you're in the valley that I'm right there with yeah, that thy rod, that thy staff, that they comfort me. That yea, do I walk that through the valley that on the shadow of death? That I will fear that no evil. That my cup, that my cup, that runneth over. That thou will prepare the table that before my enemies. That the enemies that trying to do you no good that yet God that will prepare a table that in the midst of your enemies that where you can dine that from the table of God that and enjoy that the goodness of God that and let the devil know that you can't steal that my joy that because Jesus is that the great I am that in my life that he's worthy to be praised but when God bring you in to the sweet communion and fellowship of the Holy Ghost he said I am the true vine and ye are the branches all I want you to do is abide in me and I in you there are going to be some times well, I got to purge you that, that you might that, bring forth fruit. That, purge, that, purge me, Lord. That, cleanse me, Lord. That, help me, Jesus, that, to put off those things that, that will hinder that, me from drawing close to you. That, and when God that, cleanse you that, and purge you, that, he said you will bring forth that, more fruit. Fruit, that more of God, that more of Jesus, that more of this good joy. That give me more, Lord. That I'm hungry, Lord. That hungry that for your word. That give me more that of this good word. That, that you that might feed my soul. That I'm filled up that with his goodness. That I got no room that for the devil that to bring his name into my house and I'm all filled up with Jesus there's no room
moment for nothing else. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with my Jesus. Give God praise. How many satisfied? How many satisfied? All I need, all I need, just give me Jesus. He's everything to me. And I know when you know God as I am of your life. Amen. You know that with God, with God, I can do all things to accomplish his will. My body it may not be what I want it to be it may not be what it used to be but God he's not concerned about your body he's concerned about your soul as long as my soul is increasing in you that's all that matters when I'm weak in the flesh I know God to be my strength He's El strong. He's strong in spirit. Strong in love. I thank God. He's my strength. God wants to reveal himself to you in a better way. And I'm glad he got my attention. I said, I'm glad he got my attention. He's still speaking. He's still revealing himself to his children. And it's a privilege. I said it's a privilege to know God according to his word. I'm so glad, saints of God, hallelujah, when God sends a message. See, many times we think he just gets the attention of the unbeliever. But no, he's trying to get your attention as well. He wants you to stay on course. Once I put you on course, when I put you in the right place, hallelujah, now it's up to you to stay in that spiritual place where God wants you to be. The moment you take matters into your own hands, trying to do it yourself, glory to God, you move yourself from the place where God wants you to be. That's when God is sending the word to get your attention. Hallelujah. You may not be where you want to be physically, but, amen, it's more important that you're satisfied, amen, to be in a place, a spiritual place, where God wants you to be. Hallelujah. He'll put you in a place where you can prosper in a spiritual way. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the prosperity that God is concerned with. The world is concerned about natural prosperity. But God lets me know, hallelujah, that I will provide all of your needs. <laughs> hallelujah. See, but you have to seek him first. That's a part that you have to do. Don't just think all your needs is going to fall in your lap. But you do your part, and God will do his part. Hallelujah. The world's mentality is to do less and expect God to do more. But the Lord said, I'm a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. We can't stop seeking him. See, many think that we should just seek him when we seek the Holy Ghost. Oh, that's just the beginning. But once God brings you into his family, we have to continue to seek him. Seek him for direction. Seek him for guidance. Seek him for understanding. Hallelujah. And God, he will give you understanding. When you understand why he's getting your attention, that's when the surrender comes. Hallelujah. That's when, glory to God, you now see your eyes are open, your spiritual eyes. See, God showed you some things in the natural, but he's trying to get your spiritual eyes. To become open. To see what God is trying to show you. I hope you get this. When God got Saul's attention, later called Paul, hallelujah, as he was traveling on the Damascus road, going in a direction 
hallelujah, not toward God. But God had a work for him to do. I'm so glad that God, he overlooked my faults. Oh, God, he saved me by grace. I didn't deserve it. I, I thank him for his grace. Hallelujah. Oh, I appreciate God giving me this opportunity. Amen. God could have called anyone else, but he called Saul. For Saul was on his way to receive authority to cast men and women in jail who called on the name of Jesus. But God said there was a light <laughs> Ooh, that shined round about him. Amen. No one saw the light but Saul. The light was just for him. When the word is going forth, you must take it personal. Lord, that word is just for me. Don't try to point it at others. Don't try, hallelujah, to preach to others. Let God preach to you. Oh, he's a good God. We can be too preachy. We can receive a good word and we take it home and try to apply it to others. Nope, that word was just for you. <laughs> hallelujah. Well, those around him didn't see the light. But God, he spoke. He spoke. Oh, Lord. And said, Saul, Saul. As he said, Moses, Moses. He said, why are you persecuting me? And see, just as Moses said, well, Lord, who are you? Well, that's what Saul said. Lord, Lord, who are you? See, some people can go to church all their life and still don't get to know who God is. Lord, have mercy. Thank God we can only know him by the Holy Ghost. Many know God is the Father, know of the Father. They know of the Son. Many know Jesus Christ. But to know God personally, that's where the Holy Ghost comes in. Amen. You can't say you know God, the Father, and the Son, but deny the Holy Ghost. Because all three, they're one. And here, God had mercy upon Saul. He could have wiped Saul out for all the destruction that he had caused. I'm so glad God didn't wipe me out. Oh, I'm so glad, so glad that death didn't consume me while I was out in my mess. God has given you a chance, hallelujah, to clean you up. Oh, God, before it's too late. God blinded Saul, blinded his eyes physically for three days. But yet when he opened them, he eyes spiritually were open. See, this is what it means by sometimes we can see the word but not really hear his voice. And we can see our circumstance but not really see why God Hallelujah. It's trying to get our attention through the circumstance. Because when God, when we don't submit to his word, because he speaks through his word, if we don't submit to his word, then he starts speaking through circumstances, through situations. You find yourself in situations, and these situations that we find ourselves in, they're not comfortable situations. Hallelujah. They're uncomfortable. Glory to God. So you get to that place where you seek God and say, Lord, why? And you do it in a sincere way. You meet his condition. God, he'll, he'll let you know. And more times than not, it's something in you. Don't blame other people for your mess. Hallelujah. Take responsibility for your own action or lack thereof. Oh, God, he's a, he's a good God, saints. This word is for me. Hallelujah. See, this is not junk food. This is meat. Hallelujah. We can apply it to our lives to become better versions of ourselves. Lord, I want, Lord, help me to be a better version of me. Glory to God. I want to not just suffer, continually suffer. Amen. The chastenings of the Lord. <laughs> but I want to correct myself. See, God is trying to correct it, but we have to have a mind to correct ourselves. And once God, he put... Saul off the wrong street of Damascus, put him on, as they say, the street called straight. 
Hallelujah. He went to the place where God told him to go and met Ananias. Hallelujah. God used Ananias, but Ananias heard about this man because Saul had a reputation. See, we had a reputation when we were running the streets. Hallelujah. Sometimes you meet folk, amen, whom you used to run with. Remember when we used to do this? <laughs> and that's an opportunity right there. Oh, the things I used to do, I don't do no more. I, I used to do them. Oh, but that which I'm doing now is far better than what I used to do. <laughs> oh, once you start telling them about Jesus and the Holy Ghost, that conversation won't be long. <laughs> All right, good seeing you. <laughs> oh, but don't be ashamed of where God brought you from. Hallelujah. Because you are better off now. Glory to God. You can yet still be where you used to can be. I'm glad God didn't leave me in my mess. I said, I'm glad God didn't leave me in my mess. Woo! But as we sing a song here, he brought me out. All right. Yeah, he brought me out. All right. Well, he brought me out of darkness.